Today I'm going to give you my blueprint on how to find the right HELOC. Step by step, line by line, number by number. We're going to figure this out together, completely free. And for reference, I have a playlist on my YouTube channel called All About the Line of Credit. It's about 16 videos in there. This video will get thrown in there as well. And it gives you just everything you can possibly think of, of how to properly qualify and apply and get approved for the right debt tool, HELOC, PLOC, credit card, so that you can incorporate the velocity banking concept into your personal finances. So with that being said, let's take it right to the board. We're going to start with how to find the right HELOC. So we're just going to focus in on HELOCs all across the United States. What's my very first step? Okay. Step one, Google, get on your computer, or your phone, Google search, credit unions in put your state start there once you're there I want you to hit the show more button right and you're just going to start clicking on all the different banks you're going to have a bunch of tabs open you're going to go to all of those different banks websites okay one by one right step two one by one you're going to click on those different bank websites you're going to look for the borrow tab it might say borrow it might say lending Right, those are pretty much the only two words that you'll typically see on their website. Look for that tab. It'll you either have to click it or it'll be like a drop down and we're looking for HELOC, right? Or it'll say home equity line of credit. You're going to ignore where it says home equity loan. We're not looking for a home equity loan. We're looking for a home equity line of credit, something that's revolving, something that's accessible, okay? Extremely important. Check that out, right? Make your list, okay? Whether it's a written list or you have another Word doc and you're going to have the links to those banks all in a different, you know, uh, spreadsheet or whatever. Make your list. You're going to write down the terms and offer of each bank for their home equity line of credit, whether it's the first position or second position. Write down the terms. Denzel, what are the terms? What, are the, what do you mean? You're going to jot down like what you see on the site. What are they displaying? Some banks will display nothing, right? They give you like no information. So therefore you got a call, right? Some banks will show what interest rate they're offering, right? As of right now, it'll say last updated of the month that you're typically in, right? Or the previous month. So you can write down the interest rate. Is there an intro offer? Is there an annual fee? Is there closing costs? What's the LTV, right? All these, whatever details they show, go ahead and copy paste, get all that, put it on your, on your list, on your spreadsheet. Okay. That's all you're doing is we're gathering data, right? The first four steps is just gathering data, right? Before you call the bank, before you, you know, decide who you want to work with. Okay. We're trying to make a comparison. We're trying to shop. We're trying to be an effective borrower and get the best deal, right? Step four, try to find at least three to five banks in your state, right? If you're having a little difficulty finding credit unions in your state, that offer what you're looking for, home equity line of credit, personal line of credit, whatever it may be, right? You go local, city, county, state. You can't find nothing, then you go federal, right? Federal credit unions in da-da-da, right, in your state. And you go nationwide credit unions in your, boom, state, right? Finally is major bank, right, like Bank of America, Chase, Wells Fargo. Those are the last banks I want to work with. They have the worst interest rates, the highest interest rates. They have the highest closing costs typically, right? The only benefit you have is usually the speed. Maybe you get approved faster, right? They're able to kind of run through it quicker because they have so many clients, they have built-in systems, and maybe their mobile banking is cleaner. But that is usually not the selling points when it comes to incorporating this concept, velocity banking to accelerate your debt. We wanna be looking at trying to find us the lowest interest rates we can find, the lower the better, obviously. Um, zero closing costs, zero out of pocket, preferably no annual fees, right? Those are great. Intro periods are awesome. Six months, 12 months, intro rate, three, four, five, six percent When we're right now in 2024, as I'm recording this video, we're in eight and a half, nine and a half, we're seeing a 10 and a half percent you know, HELOCs, but at the same time, right? You can see a 10, 12, 13, 14% HELOC, but then I could be working with another client over here with a 4% intro rate HELOC, and then it goes to seven and a half afterwards. So it's still three, four, five, six points below what 
all these other people are doing because they watch two videos and think that they're ready to start this concept and they make a big mistake and then that's when you find me and then we start talking and then I serve you best. So to avoid all that, to avoid shooting yourself in the foot, right? Let's take the time. This costs you no money. I just saved you thousands of dollars. You didn't have to hire the other guru to do this for you, okay? I love those gurus, by the way, right? If you're one of those people that you just wanna kinda of streamline it, great, go right ahead. If you're my single mom out there, divorced mom, widow, single dad, paycheck to paycheck, before you spend three, four, five K, eight K on some program, I'm giving you the juice right here. I'm giving you what they're doing, right? You're paying that top tier price, three, four, five, eight thousand dollars because you're hiring a staff to do what I'm just telling you to do right now. There's a staff out there of the different content creators in this space. They have staff, they're doing what I'm telling you. This is what they do all day long. They communicate with banks. They research, they research, they communicate, they have their spreadsheets, they have their list, they update it monthly, periodically, they're staying up to date. That's a white glove service. If you have multiple thousands of dollars in cash flow per month, multiple hundred dollars, you have good savings, and you're trying to streamline it, go for it. But again, if you're paycheck to paycheck, negative cash flow, zero cash flow, $50 a month, 100, two, three, four, five, you should be taking the time to do what I'm telling you right here. It didn't cost you a dime. You didn't have to pay me anything. All I ask you to do is like this video, comment below, and possibly subscribe if you get tremendous value. That's about it, okay? Step five, do not apply yet. Just because you made your list and you see the offers and da, 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 don't apply yet, please. You are shooting yourself in the foot if you apply before watching my playlist all about the line of credit and going to step six, all right? What is step six? Start calling the banks and asking them questions. Here are the questions you wanna ask them. What is the credit score required to obtain the home equity line of credit product that you guys have, the second position HELOC? Hello, my name is Denzel Rodriguez. I'm calling about your home equity line of credit. Stacy's on the other line. Okay, Stacy is just a teller. She said, okay, I'm gonna transfer you to the HELOC department. Great. Now I'm talking to Joe at the HELOC department. Boom, Joe, my name is Denzel. I am looking at your home equity line of credit offer on the website and I just have some questions that I'd like to run through with you. What is the credit score required? 720, got it. What is the debt to income ratio? No more than 50%, got it. What are your LTV options? Well, Denzel, we have the 100%, 90 and 80% LTVs. Can you break down credit score required for each of those, DTI required for each of those, um, and the terms for each of those because they will be different typically, right? What does that mean, LTV, Denzel? That just simply means the amount that they're willing to lend you based on the equity in your property in comparison to how much you owe on the property. Let's say your, let's say your primary home is valued at 500K, and you owe 300 grand, you have 200,000 of equity, but they're only gonna lend you 80% of that 200 grand as a max, okay? So that's, that's about it as it relates to LTV. Do you offer HELOCs right now? Oh my goodness, this is probably one of the most important questions out of everything here. When you call the bank, hey, do you, do you offer HELOCs right now? Like right now, do you offer HELOCs? Because a bank could remove that product at any point in time. And if you apply, you go through the application process before going to step six, guess what? You get a denial. They ran your credit. You get a denial and say, hey, right now we're not offering HELOCs, right? Or they might not even tell you that, or you're not approved, <laughs> right? And there goes. So ask that question, please. Do you offer HELOCs right now? Mobile banking access. Can you tell me about your mobile banking? How does that work in relation to the HELOC? Will I be able to log into my mobile banking or the online portal and see my HELOC and click on it and transfer money out of the HELOC to the checking account. Is that possible? Yes or no? If it is a no, you probably don't wanna do business with that bank. It's going to make Velocity Banking inefficient. You wanna be able to instantly move money out of your HELOC into your checking account at that same bank instantly, uh, you know, seven days a week, 24 hours a day. You wanna be able to have that, that movement. Now, obviously, during business working hours, it'll be faster versus at midnight or three o'clock in the morning. It may not be as instant. So, but the point is you have the, the ability to log in and do it yourself, and I don't have to call the bank or write a check, right? You don't wanna do that. You can have those options, but you don't want that to be your main driver for your HELOC or else this ain't gonna work. Banks that you wanna avoid, 
as it relates to finding HELOCs is you want to avoid these online banks. For example, Figure, Avon, you're probably getting hit up with them. They're mailing to your house every single week, every single month. And there's probably content creators promoting Figure and Avon talking about, you know, here's a credit card attached to my home and I can access to equity and I get cashback rewards and all this stuff. I promise you when you actually are in application and using the thing, it's not efficient. You have to send money from your bank, say Wells Fargo, Bank of America, Chase, whomever. Now you have to make a payment to your HELOC, which is an online institution bank. They don't have physical locations. Guess what? It might take multiple days for the payment to register, to hit. That's multiple days you're paying interest that we could have avoided. And then when it comes to taking money out, you gotta wait five to seven business days before you get your money to make your chunk to do velocity banking. I'm telling you right now, I've had clients that have gotten the tool before becoming a client with me, and they're like, the thing sucks as it relates to velocity banking. Maybe it's good for something else, but not for this. So I'm telling you right now, avoid figure, avoid Avon, avoid these online banks that offer you instant access to your HELOCs. It is a good selling point and you see content creators promoting it. I'm telling you right now, don't do it. It's not advantageous. You want to stick to that local credit union, that mom and pop bank, that small bank, that, that non-for-profit that's going to have a better rate anyways than these figure and Avon banks. You're going to get a much better rate, intro rate and better access. Okay. Super important. Now, on top of that, what are my payment options? Do you guys offer interest only or principal and interest or both, right? A bank might say, yeah, you do both. You have that liberty at any point you can do. You can pay the principal first each and every time and then interest on the due date. Ideally, what you would like is when you make a payment to your HELOC, you want 100% of that to always be principal first. And then on the due date and due date only is when you pay the interest. Now, what's even nicer is when your HELOC when it's due, they pull the interest from the equity available in the HELOC rather than you having to have more money to pay the interest because that makes it even more efficient. You didn't have to leave money out to pay the tool, right? Versus if that's not an option, okay, not the end of the world, that's okay. Guess what? All you have to do is on the due date, let's say April 1st is, you know, the first of every month is the due date. All you have to do is transfer money out of the HELOC, two, three, four hundred dollars, however much the interest is, to your checking, and then make a payment from your checking to the HELOC, satisfies the interest. This way you're not paying more interest on interest just to cover that payment because the prior times you were sending money in was all principal, which was reducing your interest costs. You're still gonna have an interest cost, you just reduced it dramatically. And then when it's due, you pull from the equity available in that HELOC and then throw it right back in. And it, and it covers the interest. And then now you'll obviously owe more, right? By however much you paid in interest, but that's the best way to do it, okay? Lastly, what are the fees? Closing costs, annual fees, $50, $100, whatever it is. Write all that down. Then you're gonna look at your different banks. You're gonna have maybe three to five banks and you're gonna compare. And you're gonna say, okay, bank A has a 7% intro rate offer. Then it goes to 0.51% below prime, it has no annual fee, and it covers the closing costs as long as I keep the line open for two years, three years. And, and I'm not required to pull out any, any dollar amount initially and, and keep it outstanding, okay? That's another thing I, that I didn't cover in here, but again, in my playlist, all about the line of credit, I do cover it there, but basically sometimes HELOC specifically will require you to take out a lump sum of money to pay off the debts that they want you to pay off. And the reason why they're doing that is because maybe you didn't meet their DTI requirements, right? So if they're requiring you to take out 25K, 30K, and they say you can't pay it all back within the first two years, that defeats kind of like the whole velocity banking method there. The, the way around that though, Let's say you're someone that already has this and it already happened. You're just coming across this video. You're like, oh my God, what do I do? Take a deep breath, okay? Take your notes, right? One thing we could do, call them up and say, okay, you said I can't pay back the full 25,000 before two years in full, right? Correct, and say, okay, can I pay $24,999.99? Wait for an answer without being charged any penalties or fees. Wait for an answer. Maybe worth it to do that. Instead, where it's like, 
if if they force you to take up take out a lump sum money and they don't want you to pay the full balance back but we can pay back a majority of the balance because maybe we don't need 25k maybe only needed 10 15k to do our first chunk you can send the rest back in park it there right you have auto pay set up sometimes they give you a discount for that and then we get the method going right we get the concept going money in money out cash flow stays money in money out cash flow stays right very very important so that was the blueprint that is your first initial steps here to properly find the right HELOC for yourself. Your next action step is going to go to my playlist on all about the line of credit. And it literally, there's so many questions in there that you can't, I can't fit in one video or else you're not going to watch all of it through. So I have to break it down into different questions and I go deep into those questions to help you find the right tool. When you have the right tool and you take the time, Instead of trying to force velocity banking to work in your favor, instead of trying to rush velocity banking to work in your favor, you can take three to six months to actually do it right, and then you would actually end up faster than the guy that tried to start you know, running out the gate but doesn't know how to crawl yet or even walk, right? So that's what I'll leave you with. My name is Denzel Rodriguez, your personal finance geek of the 21st century. It's been a pleasure. God bless you. Have a wonderful day, and we'll be talking soon.